Welcome to the ADR informational video series. In this video, I am going to describe some basic concepts related to disability that can be helpful to understand when trying to reduce the number of barriers in the electronic information technology environment for individuals with disabilities. There are many mediums for information in the electronic environment, Word and PDF documents, PowerPoints, spreadsheets, web pages, emails and the associated attachments, databases, learning management systems, publisher education software, and videos and audio media and other mediums being developed all the time. And there are a lot of programs that individuals with disabilities and others use to interact with these mediums, including screen readers, screen modifiers, voice control software, braille translators, and text-to-speech programs, to name a few. What kind of processes would we use to ensure that the electronic information technology that people use is accessible for people who use access technologies, and that the access technologies people are using are compatible with the electronic information technology? First, it is helpful to know what we mean when we talk about accessibility. To the Department of Justice, it's a civil rights issue and they define accessibility as meaning that a person with a disability is afforded the opportunity to acquire the same information, engage in the same interactions, and enjoy the same services as a person without a disability in an equally effective and equally integrated manner with essential, substantially equivalent ease of use. So what does equivalent ease of use mean? You can think of accessibility as having three levels to consider. It means the material is accessible in that the individual can perceive and interact with the materials with their senses, that is, through touch, sight, hearing, smell, and or taste. It is usable in that through their perception and interaction with the materials, they are able to complete the intended task. And finally, the user experience is such that the individual is able to accomplish the task with a level of comfort and ease comparable to others. So where does the responsibility lie in creating these three levels of accessibility for a given set of materials? A quick look at three models of disability can help sort this out. The medical model, the social model, and the political model. First, the medical model. People who use the medical model, a more traditional model of disability, might say that an individual is disabled by an impairment, and it is up to the individual with the impairment to develop the skills and learn the technologies they will need to overcome the barriers that they will encounter. The limitations of this model are many, but for the purposes of this discussion, the main limitation is that the burden of gaining access is put entirely on the individual who uses access technologies, and the designers and builders of the physical and electronic environment don't need to consider their access methods. On the other hand, people who use the social model of disability might say that an individual is not disabled by an impairment, but disabled by decisions made by people who design the environment, and therefore would feel it is the responsibility of the designers to design a barrier-free environment. For example, by using accessibility checkers for documents, asking for voluntary product accessibility template or VPATs from vendors, checking web pages with accessibility checkers like those found on webaim.org and captioning all audio content. But you can imagine that even with good intentions, the designers may not fully understand the design criterion, and so the social model has limitations as well. Finally, there's the political model. People who use the political model might say that an individual is not disabled by an impairment or the decisions of designers alone, but disabled by being excluded from the design process. People using this model of disability would look for opportunities to work with designers and users together to arrive at the most accessible designs. Being able to approach accessibility with all three models in mind may result in the best outcome. Thanks for watching and thanks for your interest in Access for All.